Thanks for having us. Looks like you get a, a great day planned out. We're glad to be a part of it. She said last thing before lunch, always exciting to stand between you and lunch, but superintendent got the after lunch spot. You know how that, you know how that works. So um, we probably don't have as many acronyms uh, as EL, but I think hey, there won't be a quiz. But uh, e-learning, I think, probably does bear a little explanation. It kind of gets a bad rap, especially on the virtual side of things. We do have a couple of programs that uh, delve into the virtual education realm, but the majority of what we do is in the traditional classroom, is how to help schools, teachers, administrators bring technology into the classroom, change what they do on a daily basis, uh, and, and bring a different kind of education to students. So our, ours is a much more broad uh, version of e-learning, and we'll kind of show you what that, that means to us. But we want to get a little bit of a pulse. I can tell from the technology in the room that uh, we're among kindred spirits here, but uh, we want to have a little pulse of who we're talking to. So how, how many of you are teachers? If you just, okay, and administrators in there? All right, and, and others? Not in one of those category? Anybody want to, you want to you yeah. explain? No? <laughs> Whatever somebody tells you to do, okay. Uh, and how many of you are working to bring technology into your classrooms? How many, that's a, would you say that's a, for your students, not so much. How many of you are in a, um, a grade level? Maybe let's start there. How many of you are working in a grade level or a school uh, where you have one to one, one, one device for every student? So not so much. Okay. All right. And some. Um, we, we have a lot of programs, as you'll see, and, and some of our work deals with helping folks bring more technology in. Uh, so a lot of our work deals with people who already have that technology in and helping them find better ways to do that. So I'm going to let Candace introduce our team and we'll, uh, we'll dig into that a little bit. So good morning. I'm Candace Datsun and I'm the director of eLearning. And I am with um, four of our team members here in the room, but you can see all of the team up there um, on the screen. So I'm joined by Jason Bailey and in the back of the room, um, Mary and Melissa. So um, our team has a background in instruction, classroom teachers, district administrators, many different um, aspects of learning. So we come to that from um, many different ways and we've been, Jason and I have worked together for about the last 13 years and we have done a lot, most of that in instructional technology. So this is our team and we hope that you'll get to know them through a lot of our programs that we have. Uh, for those of you that want to follow along, and I, I get to see from behind that a lot of you are following along with the presentation. We built this on a Mac and hadn't shared out the presentation and uh, it's losing a little bit in the translation to PC here. But uh, the best way to follow along, we'll send this along this afternoon. But if you want to uh, take a look on the web, everything we're going to talk about has a home on our web page on the doe.in.gov and, and get to us through slash e-learning. Uh, you, can, you can browse around our web pages and probably, you know, not a place that you would visit just on a whim, but we, we keep all of our information up there as well as a lot of other places we're going to show you. So if you want to find out more about what we're doing and how it can be useful to you uh, in your work, it all lives there on our web pages. And we've uh, broken some of that out into some pieces that we're going to show you here. We can be pretty flexible and talk about the things that might be interesting to you. We're going to highlight several things that we think uh, are important and timely and hopefully useful. Uh, but then if there are other things in this realm that you want to talk about or you're curious about or have been trying to find out more about, we'd be happy to spend what time we have uh, delving into that. Where do you want to start? So like Jason said, this represents um, a wide array of our work, not all of it, but some of it. So it covers things like professional development. We do a lot of things um, that are free. To, um, to teachers, administrators to take advantage of. We also have grant programs, alternative programs, like Jason mentioned earlier, the virtual <coughs> option. So again, you see a lot of them represented up here. Uh, in, in the essence of time, we'll pick a few, but please, as we go along, if there's something up there that piques your interest, just give us a wave and we'll make sure that we get to it. So one thing I wanted to do, um, kind of following along, I wanna make sure we show you a little bit of data. So one thing we wanna do is let you know who you are, where Indiana kinda, um, what it looks like in terms of instructional technology across our state, and you can do that through our tech plan. Now I'll let Jason talk to you about um, our tech plan. Uh, this is something we put out to uh, all, of our, all of our public schools, all of our public charters, and gathered information. This was new this year. It actually replaced an old tech plan, which was not terribly useful either to us or the people taking it, but it was a legacy thing that had kept going on and on and on. 
This year we turned it into a simple survey and it got some really useful information that we could then put into a form that we could get out to folks. And you can find a link to this on our front page and it'll take you into some of the data that we gathered back. So you can see where your school is on a map version or you can take a look at some of the infographics. We took that data and turned it into things that are, are helping us sort of inform our decisions about where we work and where uh, our spots are. You see that one-to-one -one is really strong across Indiana. This re represents all the districts. Uh, and we had we had the vast majority reporting back just a small uh, percentage of folks that, that didn't report into this. So um, including the folks that were planning to go to one-to-one -one this year, you can see almost 75% of our schools uh, reporting that they've got one-to-one -one at at least some grade level in their schools. Uh, the human side of that, because we know that integrating that technology, the best way to do that and support your teachers is to bring in tech, uh, technology or, or integration coaches to help folks. So we've got information about uh, from our districts that are most one-to-one, -one, the districts that are one-to-one -one K-12, uh, how many people it takes to support that. Uh, and you can see that per thousand students and staff, uh, a lot of those districts in the uh, one, one district coach per Per thousand folks there. And We've, one thing I want to say about this data that we see that it's helpful. It's helpful for us internally in the DOE, of course, but but we really hope it's very helpful to all of our districts, and that includes, of course, our charters. Because for one thing, if you're trying to make change in a district, a lot of times you need to show some data. So when you can show, if you were trying to staff or you you wanted to prove, if you would, um, that having an integration coach is important. It's great to be able to show. Look how many people in the state have invested in that and we need to follow suit or we can see that it's working and then as Jason said in the beginning when you can go to certain ones on a map and pick up the school's filter and find out who is you can sometimes find districts or people close by that are doing those things so I think this data is really important to help inform not only you um, but your um, stakeholders in your communities and and you can dig into this we won't spend a lot of time talking about these slides but um, obviously, like Candace said, information about how much content is moving that way. The big conversation among our school leaders now is about digital content and how we move away from the textbook. What does that look like? What's the next, uh, what's the next level of, of content for teaching and learning look like now that almost every one of our students has a device? And then how do we deliver that content? What learning management systems are used across across our state and you can see there's been a big uptick in Google Classroom and Google Apps for Education uh, and we've got some information about what what districts are moving there uh, and again these numbers represent at the district level how many districts that's their primary platform for productivity or uh, for delivering content so some some great information coming in there and we'll launch that again in March uh, and then having two years even even some better comparison data that we can show about uh, the shift towards digital that's going on in Indiana. So now you get kind of a, a framework, if you will, of, of what's going on in districts across the state. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is, again, a couple of places that you can find our information. So as Jason said, everything's on our website, but we also represent, how about the Pinterest site? We also try to put our things where people are living and working. So we have um, um, a Pinterest site. How many of you pin, um, use Pinterest? All right, so we have educational boards pinned, and those are around um, content areas, but then also around topics like digital citizenship and one-to-one -one integration. So if you're looking for things that are in more of a digital kind of a frame, um, math and so forth and content, you might want to check out Pinterest if that's somewhere that you um, like to live. Another place, like if you, how about Twitter? So how many of you use Twitter? are on Twitter. Okay, so if you're not, I would recommend that you get there. And I know, believe me, even though I've lived in the ed tech world for many years, when one more thing comes along, that's how I feel sometimes. It's one more thing. How could I possibly monitor that? I will have to say Twitter has probably been one of the most useful things to me in the past few years in terms of my own professional development and connecting with others. There is so much good work that gets shared um, on Twitter that I cannot recommend it highly enough to you. But for us, we have a hashtag. So when you're on Twitter, you follow along um, different organizations or people. Everything we do, whether it's Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, is I N E learn. So if you can remember I N E learn, you can find us. And not only do we have that hashtag I N E learn at I N E learn, you can follow all day, every day, and there are conversations and resources being shared there. On Thursday nights, we have a Twitter chat 
which was where people purposely come to the hashtag at 9 p.m. Eastern and a conversation happens. And during that time, and we dedicate during the month different topics, and we have kind of guest facilitators, classroom teachers, administrators who kind of host around there, and you can see some of our topics that are coming up. So for example, this week targeting math skills in the digital age classroom. So if you're a math teacher or know someone who might be interested in that, they can come on at 9 p.m. on that hashtag and watch the conversation if they're not um, feeling comfortable enough to join in. But I would take a look on, on um, Thursday night. So Twitter is another place you can find us. Like I'm talking all the time. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is the e-learning lab down at the bottom because on there I think we have. So, Besides having places to find it, we do a lot of things to support um, your professional development. And one of those is our e-learning lab. And Mary Carnahan, who's in the back of the room, she produces and um, runs that, these webinars. They have a series of topics. We usually have at least one a month, sometimes many more. This month, I think we're up to three or four, possibly, um, that are around topics. And we invite people that are in the classrooms, in schools, vendor partners, to come in and share around that. Um, and so we've had some things this month about um, digital citizenship. We have one on Speak Up coming up. So you can see the different, um, and those usually happen at um, 4 o'clock Eastern time, and we put them out on our website, and you can get there and find out and sign for those, and then you can just, wherever you are at 4 o'clock, but we also archive those, so that webinar you can go back and see the many topics that we've had. We also have a book club that's online. So if you want to participate in a book discussion, and the one that we're going to be starting is Kids Deserve It, which is a challenging way of re-looking at how instruction happens in the classroom. And Mary runs that online book club, and it's a um, chapter a week, and there's a question put out on the blog, and you respond, and conversations happen between the participants. And then at the end of it, people that have participated every week, we have kind of a random drawing for a $1,000 professional learning grant for anyone who participates. So you not only get to connect with other people around the state, but you can get resources and possibly get a learning grant. So um, I think that is an important thing to take advantage of. So webinars, book groups, Pinterest boards, lots of places to find resources. Speaking of resources, you want to talk about NBC Learn? Sure. Uh, this is a resource we bought into a few years ago. We don't, we don't do a lot of things at a state level. Uh, but this is one that really made sense. This is kind of an expensive resource, but Candace was able to negotiate a deal with them at a state level that brought this cost down considerably. Uh, and we've been able to maintain it for a few years. If you're looking for easy, quick, short uh, digital content to bring into your classroom, regardless of what your content area is, NBC Learn has some great content. This is content that aired on NBC, uh, MSNBC, all of their channels, going back into the, the early days of television, some, some great black and white pieces that they keep archived there, as well as some things that they built specifically for school. They've got this entire learning arm of their, um, of their company called NBC Learn, and they've come out and they've supported our schools. They'll do uh, even professional development, how to use this, but it's simply um, news stories broken down into bite-sized pieces Fantastic for current events, obviously, but also in the world of, of writing. They've got some great interviews with authors. And they've got these, this little cue card system where you can see the back of each one of these videos. It literally flips around, <laughs> and you can see all of the information about that video, when it aired, who was the anchor. It's got a bibliographic uh, reference that people can use if they include it in research. Um, so some great content, and this is absolutely free uh, for all of, all of our schools, all of the teachers, all of the students. Um, you can access it through our, our website. We'll take you to this link at the top, indiana.nbclearn.com. The trick is you want to start from school because what we've done is we've whitelisted all of the technical jargon, but basically if you log into that website from school, it should know that you are a part of our group because it knows what the IP addresses of all of our schools are. If it doesn't, you can email me and I can help you get your school on. But you can get on at school without any kind of a password. Just go to this website from a school computer. From there, you can sign up for a, a login. You can get a login and save videos. Your students can do the same so that they can watch videos at home. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great resource and, and we've gotten a lot of great feedback on it uh, through the years and that's why Candace keeps 
keeps working to make it available to schools. So it's free and it's out there and it's a great resource for you. So we want to make sure everybody knows to take advantage. And it of really it. is good. As Jason said, there's a lot of original programming now. The other thing that they do is they take situations that might not be kid friendly things that have happened in the news, and they put it into a way that you know you can feel confident in bringing it up. If it has controversial anything in it, it comes up with a place that says, you know, this might um, include that. So that would give you that forewarning. The other thing is if you're in certain learning management systems, they've actually integrated it. So if you're in Canvas, for example, in their resource library, there's the little peacock and you just click it and it's built inside of it. And we can help people get that into their learning management system through the backside if that makes it easier for you. So it's a really important resource and I hope you'll take advantage of it. And that goes for K to 12 all the way across the board. So it's really a good thing. During the Olympics, you know, you can see there at the top some fantastic content that they built around Olympic sports to get into math and other other content areas and make make that relevant by the the things that are going on. And they're doing a lot with the political systems right now so that you can imagine they have to whitewash that a little bit. But um, one thing, um, talking about content, I wanted to go to the rock stars of curation. So one of the things that Jason showed you in that one tech plan slide is that a lot of our districts have moved away from traditional textbook adoptions. We're no longer just adopting a textbook, but then what, right? Um, you know, if you take away the textbooks or just have class sets, where are you going to build that curriculum? And that's a lot on teacher's plates with little time. Um, and you certainly don't want to just go out to Google your entire curriculum. That's pretty out there. We want to kind of focus it. So we decided a few years ago to bring together teachers around content areas physically together and ask them to sit down and help curate, go out and find the best things. So if I'm teaching Romeo and Juliet, where are some great video pieces, audio recordings, um, good written text pieces, quizzes, things that can support that. And we brought those teachers together and they've been curating. Now we started a few years ago and we were putting things in something called My Big Campus, which was a free LMS for everyone that is no longer there so we're in the moment of transitioning all that work into a new platform by amazon called amazon inspire and we're going to be having more and more instruction on that as this year progresses as they're just launching that content repository but all the work that the curators have done in the past we've been getting it together and putting it in inspire so right now the good news is is we have an open call for new rock stars of curation so if you are a teacher or an educator that um, knows how to kind of go out and search and find great digital content to bring in, we would love to welcome you into the fold. And the rock stars of curation, they, we bring them together, we pay for subs, we bring them together a couple times a year um, in person, but then we also help them uh, work uh, uh, virtually and we, we provide a sub a couple times of the year and then that work is shared um, throughout the state so you can find the rockstars application on our website right now um, and you can see that our curators once we have these rock stars along with molly yole on our team she goes out across the state and helps people in general, even if you don't want to be a rock star, if you want to learn more about how do you curate good digital content and know that it's, that it's good stuff for students, um, we're having workshops. And you can see there's some coming there on November 2nd, November 30th, and in April. We already have those planned. We'll be adding some more as we go along. But I would encourage you, sign up, have people in your school sign up for those those um, workshops. And, and even at a lower level, if, if all of that work seems overwhelming, I mean, the real message is all of this content that we are, are bringing these folks together to curate is, is going to be publicly available because all of the work we do puts it in a place that all of our teachers have access to it. So like this, um, so like this Amazon Inspire that Candace talks about, the important part of that repository is this free content that's, that's generated by our teachers will continue to be free, will continue to be accessible, and, and be good stuff that you can bring into your classroom. Let me, let me kind of lead off onto that. If you, um, I saw a, a hand up, if you're acting in a space as kind of an e-learning coach, if you're helping as an instructional coach in some way, even if it's part-time, we have a community of practice for those people. Um, it's our coach community. And I bring that up now. We have lots of communities of practice, so we can bring that up in general. Um, and I'll talk about those or let Jason in a minute. But the coaches specifically, if you're acting in that space, helping people integrate technology, I would highly advise you join the coach community. And something coming out of there, so they exchange lots of information within that community. We're having a coach unconference on October 5th 
at Zionsville is hosting for us, and that's a full day coach unconference, which means the coaches all come together and they'll pick what they wanna learn about during the day. And in partnership with that day, we're gonna bring the rock stars of curation together at Zionsville, and Amazon is flying in to be with us there. So it's gonna be a pretty powerful day um, of PD for coach folks and to support the curation element too. So if you want to know more about that, you can definitely join that coach community or reach out to us after this and we can help you get connected there. Yes. What did you say that date was? October 5th. Do you want to just say something general about the coach communities, COPs? Uh, no, honestly, with the time we got left, okay. probably I'd rather talk about summer relearning. Okay, go ahead. Is that all right? We have a lot more to talk about. Yeah, we still have um, 15 minutes. We don't. We've got... No, I thought we were till 11.15. It's only 11. Go it's ahead. Um, so how many of you went to a summer of e-learning? Mm, not a one. <laughs> That's why I want to talk one. about it. <laughs> one. Great. Thank you. We have been funding this out of our office since 2012, and these are conferences across the state. We give a little grant for districts to host, but what we really get from the money is that we expect them to open their doors to anybody. So if, if anything we've said has been mind-blowing in any way, this is a great place to learn about it. These are, these are very cheap opportunities to have world-class professional development and technology integration. Um, every one of these is anywhere from absolutely free to um, no, no more than $25 a day. And for that, you get national keynote speakers. Most of the money we give them, these districts use to bring in a nationally known keynote speaker, somebody you would hear at a national technology um, convention, but they're brought right down into our uh, communities. And this was the map this year for 2016. We had 25 of these conferences around the state, so there's hardly a place in our state that you couldn't get to one of these in about an hour and a half, two hours driving time at the most. And, and each one of them with a different flavor, and not just these keynote speakers, but also teachers in these school corporations who had to apply. This is a competitive grant. Um, they put up their own teachers to, that just share, how do I use technology in my own classroom? Some of the best sessions I heard at these were a teacher who you know, just uses Google Classroom for her English class. Um, talking to other teachers about how does the workflow go? How do I organize this? How do I set up my class? When we you know, turn in papers, they come back uh, and this is what it looks like. So some great learning going on. It, it feeds almost everything else you see. We've got um, sessions that are talking about most of the things that, that you've seen on our board here. Uh, and we're gonna do it again in 2017. We'll begin this cycle, even though we just closed out this series. We had a meeting a couple weeks ago where we reflected with all the coordinators around the state who helped put these on. And we're gonna turn right around and we're gonna open applications in October. So. So there still is a couple things I just wanna just touch yeah, so you can go months. back and look more. Um, we have stuff for students. So who's your student digital leaders? If you have students who have a niche for technology and you have someone, maybe you have a club or a class actually, we have an organization for that to support the advisors. And then we have Hoosier Student Digital Leader events around the state and a state conference every year. So that you can find off our Hoosier Student Digital Leaders. We just finished Indiana Digital Citizenship Week. And during that week we had, um, we had lessons for every grade level to be shared, and those are still there. You can continue to use those throughout the year to support that. So that's important. We don't just um, concentrate on teachers and students. We don't let the administrator slide. We have a partnership with CIESC, which is kind of right across um, 465 from here, and they are offering um, something called Focus Forum and Lead In, and these are workshops, day-long workshops around the state that focus, one, on administrators, um, what it means to lead in the digital age. So there's lots of support at that level. And then we have, again, in there, they have ones for coaches and teachers. So you can find lots of information. I think everything that we're talking about is on our website. So you can get to, and on our website, you can certainly find our contact information, which is at the bottom of the page. Is there any questions that you have? I know we've given you a lot, and there's obviously a lot more up there. We don't talk a lot about I and, e and virtual option. Yes? Okay. So, um, so, so her question, her question was that her that she was on the NBC Learn site trying to register and her school is not listed. Send me an email, and I, I don't have it up here, but like Candace said, on the front page 
of our yeah. e-learning office, our office of e-learning, doe.in.gov slash e-learning. Uh, down at the bottom, my email's listed, Jason Bailey. If you shoot me an email, I can follow up. Um, sometimes, because if your school isn't getting their internet access through the, the folks state. that provide our state backbone, it, it's possible that they weren't in that list. It's easy to get you added, but I will have to uh, send an email to NBC Learn. They're, and they're usually really good about turning that around really quickly. So just send it to us. It's yeah. Jay Bailey at the DOE. Yeah. So. I, again, I would I would start your access from school, but it probably should still be in the list. Um, Sometimes it will pop up when you're actually in your yeah. IP, but just ask. Any other questions? We have three minutes, so anybody else? Well, I guess the final point I would just make is that we really truly want to help support you wherever you fall on the continuum toward digital learning. So if you're a teacher that just would like to bring some new resources in and think about education in a different way, maybe you don't have a lot of technology or maybe your school's starting there, we want to meet you where you are on that continuum and help you go forward. So um, please do not hesitate at all to reach out. I would really encourage you to come onto our website, follow that Twitter hashtag, join in a community of practice in your area, ask questions, and we'll be happy to help you and help you find resources and those things to go along.